Good morning, afternoon, or evening, wherever you might be in the time and space. We'll be getting going uh, here in a minute. If you have any questions, go ahead and get those into the chat room. Anything at all. If you have any help, you need any help with anything today at all. Not cool. We'll be taking off in just a minute. Gotta hear this tune first. Got sim brief loaded today. Things a little bit more by the book. Got off unexpectedly. Oh. <laughs> Hello, I'm getting to the chat room right now. I'm getting that put up on the side of my screen. Oh, so I found uh, I got sim brief loaded today, and I, I wanted to uh, use that to, to actually plan a flight based on how they would do it in the real world. I don't know if you've ever used this tool before. But you can create a flight plan, and I set it up. They don't have the. I couldn't find the caravan in there. But you set it here. Set your uh, your departure and arrival up here, and then it pulls from real world flights. And it gives you a flight plan based on uh, you know a real world flight from down here. E D uh, E D T D up to almost Frankfurt. Mm. And I've, uh, if you've listened before, been before, I have talked about when I got to Germany, I wanted to uh, make it to a place called Landstuhl, right? I hope I'm pronouncing that right. I, I should know. I was born there. Um. Just north of this point is a uh, 
an American, you know, an American Air Force base called Ramstein Air Force Base. So my dad was in the military, and yeah, I was popped out over there. I was only there for one year of my life, so what do I know about Germany? Nothing. I know that. I know that it's here, and I wanted to uh, take a look at the place, and it just happened to be going that way. So I got that included into the into the flight plan in the GPS. I've already got a job set up for us here. Uh, planning. So this is going to be a passenger run. We're going to make um, 16,000. There isn't really much as far as uh, sightseeing. I mean, there's a couple of castles along the way. Um, we're going to be flying over the Black Forest, so that's going to be nice. Pull up this map I was earlier. No, got so many darn screens open. Well, I did kind of find it is so hard to find flight charts that you don't have to pay for for Germany. And uh, click on these things uh, out here in Google or in Bush Talk, and you can get the pages. For the airport. Down here. Alright, so the, the points of interest are by castles, different things here. Be flying up through here. Black Forest. That's going to be nice. I've always heard about it, so far out. We are really close to Switzerland and the Black Forest oh. is a large forested mountain. Yeah. Not yet. We're really close to Switzerland and France. I'm learning stuff. I am so happy I'm learning stuff. But it just put me on the map here. Like I said, okay, Kenius, let's test your geography. Put you on a map somewhere in the world. I've never known. So in my studies this morning, trying to set everything up and looking around, I'm like, oh, oh, Switzerland's right here and France is right over here and Okay, um, airports. The airport that we're at, if you click on the identifier, I don't know if it's, uh, it's not going to pop up on your screen. Oh, hold on. One. Okay, it was showing. Um, wondering if. I've been invited to a group. I'll get to that in one second. Let me get this Bush Talk stuff right out of the way. Anyway, it'll pull up the page. Um, there we go. So sorry. If you have more than one window open for an app you're trying to display in OBS, then it doesn't display things properly. Anyway, there's a pin that shows the airports. And uh, you can get the... Uh, Airport information pop up. Right. So you can get all the VORs and you can learn a little bit about the runway. And but more properly. So that's nice. Okay. Um let me get into the simulator. You've sent me an invite and I want to get to that. I just finished watching the developer uh, the live update today's live uh, developer update okay some exciting news folks so they have been we're always working on the memory right and uh, you know uh, lags and you know it's such a big big deal to everybody on memory and how the game is optimized they are going to do an Uber optimization with update 15, world update 15 coming in March. And they showed us graphs and, or, you know, the developer screens you can get on, on the, uh, the frame rates and the CPU usage and all of that. They're drama dramatically reducing things by, I'm, I'm not a developer and I don't want to say it the wrong way. I would go back and, Watch the live developer that was uh, 
interview today. But basically, in a nutshell, in a gist, noob to noob, certain features in the game when they load, like when you turn your head or your the updates to your displays, it happens every couple of seconds and it causes memory usage and da 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 da. They're offloading certain features, like caching, to different threads, right? So an inactive thread might get your display updates. Either way, they're starting to move things around to be more multi-threaded, if I have it right. So with update 15, you should start seeing a dramatic improvement on how it is processing the game for you. Okay. All right, so the flight plan again. We put it into the chat room. Say hello to everybody in there. Hello, hello. Um, and okay, so it is. RF. And I've added I've added E D R Z waypoints R N N E D R Z M stuff. Okay. Check my fuel. Ah, we're good, I think. And uh, the uh, wind earlier. Oh, I did do a little bit of flying before. Going from the west to the. All right. Well, let's get out of here. Uh, it doesn't seem like we have any questions. But if, again, if you have any questions or need any help with anything, if I can't answer it, I've got two experts in the chat room as well. So, you know, if I, if I can't answer it, they probably can. And if we can't find the answer, I know I will do my best to find an answer for it. Okay. Put it up here. Paused. Aha. Typed a P on the keyboard at some point entering my flight plan. Paused. Okay. You're good to go. Contact the tower for clearance. And pull out the separator. All right, gentlemen. Airborne. Thank you for tuning in today, guys. Always. I hope everything went with well with your biology uh, tests and school. All of that. It hasn't stalled on me. Sometimes if the... I, I've been sitting here for a while when I was setting up the show. I told you I did some flying. Sometimes if you sit too long, which sucks. I don't want to have to re... Active pauses. Thank, thankfully. not want to restart. Hello. Man, I took off like a bat out of hell right there. <laughs> New to flying. Like, whoa. Uh really moving. Uh they will they will take your license away from you if you taxi that fast. They say you're supposed to taxi no faster than you can walk, and I find that a little bit too slow. In some of these uh, missions in uh, NeoFly, it can be time sensitive. I throw all that out to 
Nobody's going to give me a ticket or strip my license in the simulator. In the real world, I would never do that. You know? For a while, I owned Flight Sim World, and I used that. And, um, and even in FSX, if I remember correctly, in Flight Simulator X, on certain missions, if you taxi too fast, they would just... You failed. You failed. In Flight Sim World, they were, they were pretty... About it as well. Taxi too. Fail right then and there, have to restart. And then if it was one of those ones that, like, a, you know, back in the day when they would make their flying mission, you know, like five minutes of talking and introduction and briefing, and then they let you go. So you learn really. Pilot, have a nice flight. Well, thank you very much. May the first be with. You. Uh. So it they really drill it into your head not to uh, taxi too fast because. Then again, every time there was no way to skip stuff in the past, right? So you get five, you'd have to wait five minutes or more before you could get back into it. Okay. Uh, I didn't look at the height. Be getting a little bit of a lag. I do have a lot. We're not saying any uh, skipping in the live stream. Let me go ahead and go through and close some windows. So the first place here is Rottweil up here. We're not going by it, but let me play this. The Rottweil Test Tower is an elevator test tower in Rottweil, Germany, owned by ThyssenKrupp, who has their elevator research campus nearby. It stands 246 meters tall and was designed to test the company's express and high-speed elevator system. The tower was completed in 2017 and is the tallest elevator test tower in the world and has the highest observation platform in Germany. The tower has won numerous architecture, engineering and design awards and offers several unique selling points. For example, it is the world's first structure that can be made to vibrate by means of an oscillating pendulum inside the tower shaft. This simulates real wind loads. The shaft is sheathed with a special fiberglass textile along a spiral tube, which defines the actual outer shape of the tower. As a result, the tower is also the tallest textile-clad building in the world. She said... What the hell happened there? Uh-huh. Oh, the radio kicked in on uh, Bush Talk. That's weird. Ghosts in the system, folks. Anyway, she said shaft. Flaps aren't all the way up. No, they are. They should be now. Speed this up. I was a little kid. I don't know what stories I was reading. You know, I'd read all anything about knights and shining armor and that and this and through some stuff I I read as a kid somewhere. I can't remember what it was, but I had read stories that involved black folk, and it always seemed like this really mythical magic forest, like a Sherwood forest kind of thing, and um. I got all excited earlier, and I'm like, oh, this is going to take us right right through the Black Forest area. 
Now you can't keep up. Let me see what speed I'm going here. I'm doing 100. Okay. Cruise. Power. Color. Four minutes and 42 seconds to reach our first waypoint, Mopan. Good, thank you. All right, so we're not gonna so we're not gonna pass that tower, but we got this one. We're passing on our our port side right now. The Triberg Gallows is a double gallows on the heights known as Hockerricht on the K5728 County Road that runs from Schönwald to Fillingen, and in the county of Schwarzwald Bar Kreis in the German state of Baden-Württemberg. The gallows was first erected as a wooden structure in the late 16th century. It was later repaced by the present stone gallows in 1721. As a symbol of justice of the anterior Austrian Abervogtii of Triberg, the execution site was visible from quite afar. By 1779, 15 executions are recorded, 12 of them for witchcraft. In their present form, the gallows consist of two sandstone pillars, reinforced with iron bands, and linked by a wooden crossbeam that was added later. The southeastern pillar bears the date 1721, the other one two initials, probably a mason's mark. The road from Fortsheim to Valtshut runs by the gallows, Oh, this darn thing is going to get me in trouble. Every time one plays, then it switches back over to local radio. It, uh, Bush Talk Radio at the bottom here, it does got a radio button. So not only can you have uh, these audio things play out as you're traveling around, you can listen to local radio stations. And I really did, when I was flying earlier, I was listening to local radio stations. A wonderful 80s channel, which it still seems to be on. But for whatever reason, every time I finish playing an audible, it is kicking the radio back on. That's going to get me in trouble. Copyright wise. So. Let me close Bush Talk, close it in the simulator, and then reopen it. And, uh. That it's. How pretty. My audio is cutting again, All right? Sound level. <laughs> I don't know why or what's causing it. That's two days in a row now where the audio levels on the microphone have been greatly reduced. Something is controlling, taking control. And even uh, under advanced where I have it deselected so it doesn't do that, it is doing that. So I deeply apologize for that as well. And now I'm, I'm going to have to check that every day until I figure out what's causing it. And hopefully that's better now. Okay. So pretty, man. Okay. Wow, somebody else is in the group. That's far out. Is 
So now hopefully the radio won't be kicking on every time I do an audio now. Hopefully it's reset itself. Okay, so here we are. The Black Forest is a large forested mountain range in the state of Baden-Württemberg in southwest Germany. It is bounded by the Rhine Valley to the west and south. Its highest peak is the Feldberg with an elevation of 1,493 meters above sea level. The region is roughly oblong in shape, with a length of 160 kilometers and breadth of up to 50 kilometers. Historically, the area was known for ore deposits, which led to mining featuring heavily in the local economy. In recent years, tourism has become the primary industry, accounting for around 140,000 jobs. The area features a number of ruined military fortifications dating back to the 17th century. So yeah, again, somewhere in my youth, uh, I would read anything I get my hands on, like... Black Forest is a large forested mountain... Hello? In the state of that one just played twice. ...in southwest Germany. Oh well. It is bounded by the Rhine Valley to the west and south. Its highest peak is the Feldberg with an elevation of 1,493 meters above sea level. The region is roughly oblong in shape, with a length of 160 kilometers and breadth of up to 50 kilometers. Historically, the area was known for ore deposits, which led to mining featuring heavily in the local economy. In recent years, tourism has become the primary industry, accounting for around 140,000 jobs. The area features a number of ruined military fortifications dating back to the 17th century. So yeah, the Black Forest. Okay. Over here, more to our port side, I see somebody flying up on us. There is a castle. Not gonna make this one, but we'll hear about it. Hohengeroldsek Castle is the ruin of a high castle at 524 meters above sea level in the Black Forest. It is located on a hill between the Kinzigtel and the Schutetel in the district of Schönberg in Baden-Württemberg. The castle was built in the 13th century on the Schönberg by Walter Ivan Geroldsek as the ancestral castle of the Lords of Geroldsek. It was later destroyed by French troops during the War of the Palatinate Succession in January 1689. Today the approximately 10 meter high outer walls of the lower castle as well as the main building still remain preserved. The castle represents a typical example of a towerless tower house castle. Originally it extended over an area of 95 by 50 meters, excluding the outworks. Its ring wall had a battlement with embrasures and was 2.10 meters thick. The two main buildings, built on a porphyry rock, were about 50 meters long and up to 20 meters wide. They were separated by a courtyard. The facade of the knight's house, a four-story palace, is still largely preserved. On the second floor there was a knight's hall of 80 square meters. Nowadays Hohengerold Sec Castle still makes for an impressive sight, towering over the Kinzig Valley. Nice. Oh. Do 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 do. Leaker House is a uh, house is catching up. So that castle is a little bit over there, just out outside of our vision, but that way. So. There's another pilot over there. 007 Raffi. One thing we can definitely say about these flights so far in Germany, it is just so dang beautiful. It is so dang beautiful here. Quiet. It's the bottom of the air.
You're turning uh, your turbulence off. You can't fly formation with the, that kind of turbulence. Well, that's interesting that that I'm not having any, and I don't know if it's... Uh, I'm getting some. I'm getting bounced around a little bit, but I, I don't know if it has something to do with me using autopilot or not. I'm not sure. That is interesting. Uh, let me just turn it off uh, for a moment and see what happens. I also have a yaw damper in here. Getting a little push. Oops. Let's go back out to this. This view would allow uh, this view will allow us to still control the plane. You also have clouds and winds. Uh, I have it on live at the moment. Uh, at least I did. Let me double check. Oh, uh, I guess. Oh, you're. Oh, okay. Well, I did when I came in, but I joined your group, so you have control of the weather at the moment. Well, I guess it doesn't matter now if you've got the turbulence turned off. This makes no difference. All right, put the autopilot back on. Put the yaw damper back on. We are now headed, we are past our first waypoint. And we are headed to EDRZ. Echo Delta Romeo Z. Come on, Kenyus, think. Zulu. Echo Delta Romeo Zulu. Trying to think what else I, I heard in the uh, the live the developer live stream today. The only thing that's really sticking is that huge optimization that they have planned for world update 15 i didn't even really i it's not i'm not remembering where or what is going to be updated in the world all i tuned into was that nice all i tuned into was the uh the huge optimization that's coming i'm trying to think of anything else that really stood out in the live stream today um working title is working on some advanced I don't know, like visual flight rules stuff you can put into the Garmin to pull up all kinds of different things or airspaces and VOR, NDBs. I'm not something like that today. Uh, I didn't catch anything on VR today. I put in my suggestions, uh, commented on a few things. I didn't, uh, I was mostly in there just being a total fanboy and just posting my, my praises. I like, I love you guys. You guys are the best. You guys are the, the greatest developer ever. People are in there trashing them. And you know, I don't want to, you can't be rude to other people. You have to, if the, you know, if they're going to trash them, they're going to trash them. That's their opinion. Um, my opinion is, 13 years ago, as a flight community, all we were doing was crying. Okay? 
13 years ago, we were, that's all we could do is cry is because there wasn't a, a good simulator out there for us. And then DirectX, uh, DirectX, DX, uh, the, uh, X-Plane, forgive me. At least there was X-Plane, right? And they deserve all the credit in the world, too, for creating a simulator and keeping us from entirely freaking out. And the idea that Microsoft would ever come back and create another simulator that, you know, that's all we could do was cry. And so after years of crying... It was, it's just a miracle in general. I mean, if Microsoft told us, look, we're not ever going to make Flight Simulator again. Period. That's it. End of story. The, the, the thought that it would ever even come back. That, it's a miracle. Well, it's money. But <laughs> probably more on the side of money than miracle. But regardless, it came back. They, you know, so there's even now it makes me think of other titles that I wish would come back. And it gives me hope that, hey, if Microsoft can bring back a title and da 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 da, -da why can't you guys get with it and bring back some something? You're almost, yeah, almost in France. We're at the line, huh? We're going to be skirting the line. Hmm. Yeah, just skirting the line, I'm sure. Let's go back in here. So yeah, I mean, just far out, man. Okay, some things that are going on over here, like a nuclear facility. There's a bridge over here, the Bridge of Europe, and... Come on. Okay, so another bridge. I thought there was a nuclear facility here. That's the Bridge of Europe. European Parliament is right over there. Uh, we passed it, but it's over to our, uh, our port. Strasbourg we passed, and they have a nice cathedral, which we aren't going to be able to hit up. Over here to our starboard, starboard was a battle, it seems. The siege of Fort Louis saw a force composed of Habsburg Austrians, Hessians and Bavarians led by Franz von Lauer lay siege to Fort Louis, which was held by a Republican French garrison under Michel Durand. The French capitulated after a defense lasting exactly one month. They capitulate a lot. During the War of the First Coalition, part of the French Revolutionary Wars, in 1793, the fortress was sited on an island in the Rhine River, but today Fort Louis is a village in the Bas Rhin department in France. General of Brigade Michel Durand's 4,500-strong garrison consisted of the 1st Battalions of the 4th Light, 37th Line and 40th Line Infantry Demi Brigades and the Strasbourg Volunteers, 3rd Battalions of the Guard and Sorn et Noir Volunteers, and the 12th Battalion of the Vosges Volunteers. Dominique André de Chain Balhack supervised the technical elements of the defense. Altogether, Fort Louis mounted 111 artillery pieces. General Major Franz von Lauer commanded the 4,700-man besieging force which included a siege train of 55 guns. Lauer commanded three battalions of the combined Bavarian Regiment, one battalion from the Hessian Lieb Regiment, the Hessian Lieb Grenadier Battalion, one Austrian battalion from an unknown regiment, and two squadrons of the Secular Hussar Regiment. I see Flieger Hayes back there. It was looked like he was almost catching up. Oh, that's a drag. He left the group. I was gonna say, can we? Maybe I can slow down some more.
So Strasbourg, right? He has rejoined the group. Far out. Let me let me see if I can slow down. Yeah, I can. Going into flap flap range, but oh yeah, it's not a big deal. down to see if we can get down about a hundred knots and I am at five thousand feet I hear engines I hear engines getting closer Nice. Oh, what an awesome plan. Oh, I wanted to get a screenshot. Come on, come on, come on. Oh, almost had it. Not you, me. Try to get a screenshot. Right there. That's a good one. All right. Hopefully I haven't slowed down too much. All right, I better increase speed a tiny bit. All right. Post that on social media. Nah, that's a good shot. Show everybody how much of a geek I am. Oh. Sometimes my computer is really silly and it captures both monitors. I just wanted to capture the darn simulator. Whoa. Captures too much. All right. Well, I got us all. I got us all on the photo.
Trying to get another another screenshot. Trying to get that ideal shot. Almost had it. I had a good one, but I'm sure I can take another a better one. Oh. Not to see moment. Okay, we are almost at where I wanted to go before we hit, uh, almost. Okay, so we're coming into the area near Landstuhl, if I'm pronouncing that right, and Ramstein Air Force Base is there, and I was born in the town of Landstuhl. I guess they didn't have a place to deliver babies on the Air Force Base, I don't know. I know that Landstuhl is on my birth certificate, not the Air Force Base. So, uh, and I've never seen it. I've never been there. Well, I was there for a year of my life, but what can you remember when you're a baby, right? Nothing. So, uh, this is exciting for me because I've always kind of wanted to see the area. And this is probably one of the best ways for me to check things out. Do, 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 do. And it's 48 minutes after the hour. And what else do we have going on? We have. Do pull that out over here. And see what's nearby. Oh, okay. So we passed that. Over here, we missed this. St. Peter and St. Paul's Church of Wissenberg is frequently, but incorrectly, referred to as the second largest Gothic church of Alsace after Strasbourg Cathedral. However, the building, with its interior ground surface area of 1,320 square meters most probably is the second largest Gothic church in Bas Rhin, which is one of the two departments of the Alsace region. The church displays a Romanesque bell tower, the sole remain of the church built in the 11th century under the direction of Abbot Samuel, and is thus a station on the route Romain Vilsos. The major part of the currently visible church is the work of builders under the command of Abbot Edelin, in the late 13th century. During the 14th and 15th century, the church was richly decorated with stained glass, sculptures and mural paintings but only parts of the former abundance of work survived the vandalism which occurred during the French Revolution. Of the surviving stained glass, what is not seen in the church itself can be found in Strasbourg's Musée de l'Oeuvre Notre Dame. The church contains a fresco representing Saint Christopher, with its height of 11 meters, it is the largest painted human figure on French territory. All right, and just up ahead and at two o'clock is this forest now we're coming into. The Palatinate Forest, sometimes also called the Palatine Forest, is a low mountain region in southwestern Germany, located in the Palatinate in the state of Hello? Rhineland Palatinate. The forest is a designated good, nature good. park covering 1,771 square kilometers and its All highest right. elevation is the Kalmit. 
Together with the Live northern streaming. part of the adjacent Vosges Mountains in France, it forms the UNESCO People. designated Palatinate Forest North Vosges Biosphere Reserve. I'll call you after I'm done. and erosion of the different Bye -bye. strata of the Palatine Forest with their variable hardness have resulted in a low mountain landscape with a dense, deeply incised system of valleys and wide variety of hill shapes. The hard and resistant rocks of the lower and middle bunter have produced a scarp land relief, whose questers characterize the landscape, especially in the north and east, whilst the southeastern part of the Palatinate forest is dominated by rather isolated types of hills separated by erosion surfaces. Alright. So we have a minute or two before we get there. We'll take a short little break once we get there. I was looking for my YouTube page. I must have closed it. Do, 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 do. Yeah, let me put this tune on, and then we'll, again, when we get there, we'll take a little break. I'm going to check out the area pretty well. Okay, we're here.
right. So I had to pause. This is where I was born. I don't see the tag for the town uh, in the simulator. I'm looking for it. But as I understand it, this is it right here. Lens stool or, or this little tiny place up ahead in between these places. I'm not really sure. But on the map, this is the place. And there's Ramstein Air Force Base uh, right up ahead. Let me unpause. get a little bit closer so yeah this is this is where yours truly was born so I wonder how uh where they how they drove like when they drove from the Air Force Base what hospital did they go to what route did they take what was it like there where did they eat This would have been 1968. There it is. See the town right there? That's it. That's the town. So yeah, they drove... I don't know if they were living on base. But somewhere around here, or they lived down in here, and I was born over there. I wonder what streets I was on as a little, as a little baby. Where did they take me when I was a little baby? I wonder where the hospital's at. And who knows what it looked like in 1968. I'm sure it's been, you know, massive development since then. And then here is the airport, the air base. It's a drag. I mean, uh, uh, changing subjects. It is awesome being escorted by two F-18s, but the, in the simulator, for whatever reason, I've got something set up wrong, or it's not displaying their aircraft as F-18s. Why it's displaying them as small general aircraft and or Airbus, I, I don't know. Okay, so we're making our turn. Yeah, see that? He's in an F-18, actually. It says F-18E, 18E right on it. But, and I've been checking my settings, and same with, uh, yeah, both of them are in F-18s in their simulator. And normally when we do fly-ins with uh, the development crew or the developers on Fridays, um, when, when I used to anyway, it seemed like everybody's plane was displaying properly. I could see plenty of other military aircraft. So I don't know what it is. That's not that that's causing them not to display properly. Pretty bitchin'. Uh, what I should do is when we land is I should switch to an F-18 and oops and see if it displays properly Kaiserslautern is a city in southwest Germany located in the state of Rhineland Palatinate at the edge of the Palatinate Forest the historic center dates to the 9th century Kaiserslautern is home to about 100,000 people. Additionally, approximately 45,000 NATO military personnel inhabit the city and its surrounding district and contribute approximately 1 billion US dollars annually to the local economy. The city is also home to football club 1FC Kaiserslautern that has won the German championship four times. Kaiserslautern already housed a royal court in Carolingian times. The settlement saw its heyday the middle of the 12th century, when Frederick Barbarossa had the existing castle expanded into a palace. Wow. During the Thirty Years' War, the city was conquered successively by the Spanish, the Swedes and the Imperial forces. In the mid 19th century, the city, which by then belonged to the Kingdom of Bavaria, became the center of the Palatine Uprising. At the same time, it developed into one of the most important industrial locations in the Palatinate thanks to numerous companies being founded in the textile industry, 
the metal industry and mechanical engineering. As of December 31, 2019, the city had a population of 100,030, making it the fifth largest city in Rhineland Palatinate. In terms of area, Kaiserslautern is the largest city in Rhineland Palatinate. The Kaiserslautern military community, with approximately 50,000 military personnel and civilians, constitutes the world's largest U.S. military base outside the United States. For this reason Kaiserslautern is also referred to as K-Town, a term called the early American military population who had Horse. difficulty pronouncing the name. Difficult? How, how difficult is it to say Kaiserslautern? It's not. That's still, that's, that's really dumb. K-Town. Just trying to make it hip. All right, let's see how long we have. I'm going to switch to an F-18 as soon as I land. I want to see if that'll display properly. We have... Four minutes and eight seconds until we uh, get to our destination. And that is at... Uh, E-D-R-F. Let's see if we can call it in at this point. There it is. E-D-R-F. Wind is blowing probably from the west still, but we'll check. All right, so we're all set up with air traffic control to land. Runway eight. There's our pattern. Taking another minute, I hear him so close. Close enough to cast shadows. All right, so we're going to be entering the pattern just almost straight on. Let me go ahead and turn off the autopilot and do that. Pull back on the throttle. Let's begin descent. And come over here and come in for a, a straight in. I've said it a million times. Well, that's hyperbolic. I've said it a few times, but I'll say it again. You guys live in such a beautiful country. This is the first patch of brown I think I've seen the entire way. I'm like, do you guys even have multiple types of geographic zones? Do you have any deserts in Germany or, you know, we have so many different types of terrain in the United States. And yeah, this is like the first area of a kind of like brown. Brown is not a color I I associate have associated so far with flying in Germany. United States, man, a lot of brown. A little bit of turbulence there. The microbursts flying over these ridges.
500. That looks like it hurt. Yeah, I came in a little fast, didn't I? Taxi to parking and shut down your engine. Okay, good enough. All I gotta do is turn off, make the uh, Neo Fly think that. Well, it doesn't matter. I'm gonna turn it off anyway. I I need to turn it off so that Neo Fly will pay us. So once it it knows the engine is off, we should get an audible that we're gonna get paid. Transporter. Yep. You can open the doors and begin the disembarkation. Working our way back up. We've lost a million dollars on our last cross, big cross country, trying to make back a lost million dollars. This should pay 16000 Transporter. All the passengers have disembarked. Good job. See you soon. Amy. There it goes. Clear to start your engine. All right. We got paid. Okay. Uh, now I wanted to see if the uh, F-18, if, it, if it will display the planes properly if I am in the same plane. So let me go back to the main menu and re-catch up with these fellas in just a moment here. I also said I wanted to do a quick little smoke break, so smoke if you got them. And, uh... Let's find another Arthur Uria tune to play. Videos. We heard one bright color yesterday. Here's one call that's called Tip Jar Frown. Yeah, these are all recorded in his living room. He did these during the pandemic. So if it sounds like a living room environment, you're correct. Um, let us depart from when I'm done, you can have what I could not steal. Where's Ramstein? i 
Oh, it's crap. I hope that airport is big enough. It probably isn't. You can start your engine now. Should probably start over here. Everything looks good from where I'm sitting. Taxi to the runway and take off. Tip jar frown. All right. Uh, we've changed. I'm taking off from ETAR, which is Ramstein, where we were just flying over a moment ago. And uh, runway 26. And we'll find out right now if it displays the aircraft properly. If not, it's got to be a set. There's got to be a way. I mean, and that makes no sense whatsoever. We're using aircraft that is part of the simulator that we got free with uh, the simulator so let's see if uh any or anybody else will spawn in next to us and we can determine okay i see you coming in here they both come Sixteen thousand feet i'm just gonna hold here on the runway for a moment What happened? You hit the ground? Oops. Yeah. Now look, it's right. It is correct. That even sounds right. Yep. Yep. All right. So it is displaying right properly. Now, I knew at one point how to operate this thing, and it's been a while. I like the F-14 a little bit better, so I'm probably not going to remember how to do anything. I would need, you know, 30 minutes. I will figure it out. What the hell? Let's just go. All right. But, at one point, I knew how to do navigation and autopilot and flight plans and uh, waypoints, everything. Uh, VOR to VOR flying, radio communications. So I've done it. Hmm. 
Rammstein Air Base is a United States Air Force base in Rhineland-Palatinate, a state in southwestern Germany. It serves as headquarters for the United States Air Forces in Europe, Air Forces Africa and also for NATO Allied Air Command. Rammstein is located near the town of Rammstein-Miesenbach, which stands outside the base's west gate, in the rural district of Kaiserslautern. The east gate of Rammstein Air Base is circa 16 kilometers from Kaiserslautern. Other nearby civilian communities include Landstuhl, some three miles from the west gate. Oh crap. Oh, I didn't think that I was a uh... <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> I was looking back, but I didn't think that I was descending. <laughs> oh, stupid. Stupid, stupid. Dum da dum dum dum. No, try not to do stupidity intentionally. I'm good at it. On fly by wire. All right, so this is your autopilot screen, barometric alt hold, radar alt hold, flight path. Hold, CPL, and this is a roll hold, ground track, heading. Your radio, your take hand. Doing it again. Up, Dimaggio, up. All right, let's see about doing an alt hold. All right. Now, okay, good. We're we're holding. Now let's see about a speed hold. We're going four hundred and seventy knots. Ground track. about speed is speed hold over here on this one I forget uh, I swore it was Yeah, it's not. It's, it's got to be over here. Ah, uh, heck, I don't remember. Flaps, yeah. Okay.
What is our course heading? Uh, we are probably... Okay, course heading. Uh, let's go north. Let's see if this works. I don't think this was digital like that. Not like the... Uh... That's heading select. what that does that'll hold us on 300 nope it's using whatever our heading bug is now if I can remember where to change the heading bug boy doesn't like that Come on. There's the heading bug. Uh, no. Too fast. Well, let's just turn that off. That is causing us some problems. Turn it off. No, that doesn't turn it off. I don't remember how to turn it off. try to go north. I'm going south now. See if we can spot the fellas. Oh, uh, there's Henning way up there. 26,000 feet. What I was searching for is the autopilot controls to get on a course heading and control uh, <laughs> speed. So what I'm interested in do doing is a speed hold and a track hold. So going north now at 8,000 feet. So again, let's say I wanted to do an 8,000 foot hold. Let's see. Do a altitude hold here. Let's see what that does. Shouldn't be rolling. I don't know why it's rolling. I just wanted to hold an altitude. I 
Heading bug is... Let's see... Brightness. That's not moving. That's why I really I have never I, I really I, I love these planes. They're beautiful. They're monsters of war. They're amazing. But I hate the layout. I hate how were they just put shit everywhere. Uh, it, it's they're so far from intuitive. Pardon me, get this thing straightened out again. Um, the F thirty five is probably my favorite. It makes sense. Everything in the F thirty five makes sense. Everything in these older planes. Nah, forget about it. Forget about it. Got to relearn everything. All I'm trying to do right now is, again, just a simple heading bug, you know. Do a heading change. Crazy crap. Okay, there's radar. Nope, still climbing. What is my plan now? Um, I don't have one. Trying to see if I could get this thing under control so I could get us into a formation or, you know, or at least get us on the same track or something. But no, I don't have any plans. You just wanted to make sure that uh, this is all I was testing is to make sure that I could see you guys in your proper aircraft. find out where we're at on this map how far have we gone oh, I'm way over here in France already sure enough and we're right next to this Visage left begins near the Bessringen section of the town of Metzig and ends in Metlock although Bessringen and Metlock are only separated by approximately two kilometers the Saar makes a winding path that lasts nearly 10 kilometers. On the forested mountains within the Zarschleff, there are the historical sites of the former cloister church of St. Gonf in addition to remnants of the former cloister complex as well as the ruins of Montclair Fortress. The only locale located immediately on the Zarschleff is the village of Dreisbock, which can be reached by ferry. On both the inner and outer riverbends run hiking and biking paths, an area west of the Zarschleff known as the ah. Stein Battle of approximately 100 hectares has been designated as a protected area. There, there's the heading bug. Okay. Jeez. The heading track bug right here. Okay. So I'm in France. I need to get back to Germany. So I need to be going uh, heading northeast and that should do it so let's see what it does now 
I put it back on the heading. Heading select. Turn, baby. Heading. Heading select. There we go. There we go. Okay. So, trying to do a heading. Uh oh. Stop turning. Come on. Keep going. See if it'll hold. There's the bug. Right there. Oh, stop spinning. Get back on track. All right. So. Doing a heading track of six zero degrees. Do we can do another altitude hold? One of them, come on, work. I think that working I think that is working 5,700 feet on a heading of six, six zero there you are And I am going. Boy, that's fast. 525 knots. The Celtic Hill Fort of Ozenhausen is one of the biggest fortifications the Celts ever constructed. It was built by Gauls of the Treveri tribe, who lived in the region north of the fort. The fort is located on top of the Dolberg, a hill near Ozenhausen in Germany, about 695 meters above sea level. The only visible remains are two circular earth ramparts, covered with stones. The site is formed in the shape of a triangle with rounded ends. One rampart surrounds the whole fort. On the southern side, another similar embankment is built about 40 meters in front of the main one. The ends of this outer rampart approach the main one but do not touch it. Because the entrance of the main rampart is located on the western side, no significant purpose for the outer one has been determined. From west to east the fort extends 460 meters, from north to south 647 meters. 
The total length of the ramparts is 2,500 meters and they contain 240,000 cubic meters of stone. Thousands of beams were attached to the ramparts which probably presented a vertical stone wall to the exterior. Another great shot right there. Let me post that to social media. All right, that is nice. All right, we should probably two thirty. Yeah, we should probably touch down. Call it an afternoon. Got some money made today and got to see a couple of nice things and see the place where I was born. Another nice screenshot. All right, so now where are we? We are already back up near Bromberg. Port right ahead of us, E D D F. We're looking for Echo Delta Delta what is F E D D F F Foxtrot Echo. Delta Delta Fox Truck. Flying so fast, it changes so fast. Read the whole thing. Dang it. There it is. Frankfurt, Maine. ED Echo Delta Delta Foxtrot. Twenty one mile, nineteen miles west, and we have landing clearance.
I hope I have that all turned off properly now. Slowing down. And there it is. Lucius D. Clay Kaysern, commonly known as Clay Kaysern, is an installation of the United States Army in Hesse, Germany. The Kaysern is located within Wiesbaden Urbanheim. It is named for General Lucius D. Clay. It is the home of the Army's 2D Theater Signal Brigade, 66th Military Intelligence Brigade and is the headquarters of the U.S. Army Europe, which oversees the 7th Army Training Command, 10th Army Air and Missile Defense Command and 21st Theater Sustainment Command. Clay Kaysern also maintains an airfield. Okay. So, entering the landing pattern here. 260 dots. Somebody's flying a helicopter right above me right at the moment. I can hear them out there. They're close enough. I can feel the wind turbulence of the... I can feel the vibration of the rotors. Two hundred sixty knots. Let's slow down. Easy. What are you rotating for? Silly thing.
That should be full flaps. What are you rotating for? It's rotating hard. It's like the autopilot's taking over. You son of a gun. Something has toggled my... The autopilot is still ticked or something. I'm trying to do some uh, commands to maybe toggle off the autopilot. Oh, and now we've gotten lost uh, too much speed. That's lovely. If I can recover from this. 96? I don't know. 160? There we go. Hey, that's a nice stadium. Currently known as the Deutsche Bank Park for sponsorship purposes, and formerly known as the Karmas Bank Arena, is a retractable roof sports stadium in Frankfurt, Hesse, Germany. The home stadium of the football club Eintracht Frankfurt, it was opened in 1925. The stadium has been upgraded several times since then, the most recent remodeling was its redevelopment as a football-only stadium in preparation for the 2005 FIFA Confederations Cup and 2006 FIFA World Cup. With a capacity of 51,500 spectators for league matches and 48,500 for American football and international football matches, it is among the 10 largest football stadiums in Germany. The stadium was one of the nine venues of 2011 FIFA Women's World Cup, and hosted four matches including the final. The sports complex, which is owned by the city of Frankfurt, includes the actual stadium and other sports facilities, including a swimming pool, a tennis complex, a beach volleyball court and a winter sports hall. The arena has its own railway station, Frankfurt Stadion, on the National Rail Network. Oh, I botched that. So, I was having an autopilot problem. I'm not going to blame the landing on that at all. Um, just my lack of perpetual training with this thing. Uh, she wasn't slowing down, though. She stayed at almost like 260 till the very end. She wouldn't come down in speed. Full flaps, gear down. She should have configured for slower speed. I had almost nothing in the throttle. I kicked on the spoilers. Uh, several, you know, about a mile out to try to slow us down even more. And it was slowing us down. It was doing good. And then kind of lost all power at the end. So that wasn't pretty at all. Oh, I must have toggled it down and then toggled it back up. Oh, because I... Yeah, that, that's probably it then. I had the gear... I must have hit hit it twice. I absolutely hit the key. I know I hit. I did. But it, I must have toggled twice. Hmm. Well, that blows. Eh, well, you can't win them all. Try that again. Uh, maybe we'll do some F-18 tomorrow again. We'll try it again. But I better take off. It's 3 o'clock. I'm not going to uh, push this one to the 4 hour. So... Thank you uh, for tuning in today, and awesome flying in a group today, and really fun, fun there at the end getting into the jet. So now you got me wanting to, to get back into that, to stick some landings with that. So I hope uh, your biology class went well. I hope uh, whatever you got going on school-wise, and whomever was out there, if it was Hans or, or somebody else, uh, I hope you're doing well. Cheers. Grab my mug again. Here's to your health, well-being, and prosperity. Ah, good coffee. And we'll pick it up tomorrow. Is that that right? So, signing out for today. Again, have a great day, great night. Uh, if you're new, please like and subscribe. And if you need any help with anything, <laughs> how about you just watch me fly? You pro I'm probably not the best person, but I will do my best. If you need any help or need any questions, answers, something you don't understand with Microsoft Flight Simulator, NeoFlight, even OBS live streaming, anything. If you have any questions at all and I can help in any way, 
I am absolutely here for you, and I will do my best. And if I can't, if I don't know the answer, I will find the answer. Okay, so have a great day, and see you tomorrow.